Our next Jaeger recipient is Joe Rule of District 10. In his quest to encourage all his students to become scientifically literate, Joe has adopted an approach which incorporates guided inquiry, reflection, project-based learning, group work, and more. Joe shares his own knowledge through presentations at numerous state and national education conferences, as well as meeting with pre-service teachers from Purdue University. Joe Rule. The reason I'm smiling, oh, I'm smiling up there also, is I'm in the presence of scientists and science educators. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that you do for science education. It is sincerely appreciated. Raise your hand if you can remember and you can name a mentor who inspired you to pursue a career in science. If you look around all the hands, mentors are essential. One of my mentors, who I think the world of, Dr. Jane Butler Cayley. She was my mentor a long time ago in a university far, far away called Purdue. When I was an undergrad and then in graduate school, she was my mentor. She inspired me. And I thought, that's what I want to do. And she taught me the importance of professional development. It's the lifeblood in our profession. And so every summer, I've tried to do something to, to make myself grow professionally. I'm about to start my 38th year of teaching. And does that sound like a lot? <laughs> I don't know. Somebody asked me the other day if I was ready to retire, and I, it made me sad. I'm not emotionally ready for that yet. I, I'm still having a good time. But I want to mentor also. And so I've always thought, I don't just want to teach biology. I want to inspire the kids and maybe even get them to love biology. That's what I've always been about. So how do we do that? 38, 37 years of teaching have taught me that two things are really required, research-based teaching techniques and relationship. Relationship is huge, but I just want to focus on the research-based teaching techniques, which I've learned through professional development experiences through the years. Research-based teaching techniques. Now, there are a lot of them out there, but I just want to focus a little bit on these five C's. Choice, collaboration, communication, critical thinking, and creativity. Now, about 10 years ago, actually a little over 10 years ago, the National Education Association stated that collaboration, communication, critical thinking, and creativity are essential 21st century skills that all of our kids should learn. And I heartily agree with that. But I've added choice to the list not as a skill for kids to learn, but rather by that I mean setting up a classroom environment where kids have lots of choices of activities designed to meet the varied learning styles that they have. And so I really believe that when kids are allowed to engage in choice, collaboration, communication, critical thinking, and creativity, that they will actually like learning science, maybe even love it, maybe even be inspired. There's something about teenagers. They like choice. They like to collaborate. They like to communicate. They like to involve themselves in critical thinking and creativity. And I think the reason for that is, I think our brains are wired for thinking and learning this way. Think for a minute about our prehistoric hominid ancestors out hunting for food. Don't you know that tracking down that woolly mammoth required critical thinking and problem solving and collaboration? I mean, you certainly wouldn't want to do this by yourself. And communication. And those who were successful 
who were able to do those things obviously survived, and so we are the result of those ancestors. And so I really believe our brains are wired for learning in this way. And then think about those early prehistoric ancestors sitting around the campfire that night retelling the adventures of the day's hunt. I just know. You see, t storytelling is a creative activity. Creativity is a uniquely human, pleasurable activity, and I just know that those people, when they were retelling the adventures of the day's hunt, must have had smiles on their faces. I know that when they painted those cave paintings on the walls of the caves, they had to be smiling because that's a creative activity. And so I think our brains are wired for learning in this way, and I think that's why kids, if they're allowed to engage in these five C's, will actually enjoy science and maybe even be inspired, maybe even love it. Now, I've noticed over the years, this has created a shift in my techniques. It's required me to move from a teacher-centered classroom to a student-centered classroom. It's taken me off stage. But that's been beneficial because now I'm not doing the work, the kids are doing all the work. Well, I'm just kind of kidding a little bit there. I still work. But I've noticed when I'm off stage working as a guide on the side rather than a sage on the stage, I'm freed up to sit down with small groups of kids as they're working and respond to questions that they initiate, to listen to their thinking. It frees me up to talk with them one-on-one -on -one and really mentor. And when we have the opportunity to mentor, that's when we can nurture, that's when we can inspire. Thank you, Jane Butler Cayley. So just briefly, I want to show you what, what it looks like. Um, these are my ninth graders in biology class. And I've taken the school year and divided it up into two to three week units. And at the beginning of each unit, I give the kids a menu of all the learning activities on the buffet or on the smorgasbord. Lots of learning activities. They have a lot of choice. This is where the choice comes in. Kids like choice. And this has been a challenge because I've had to write all these activities over the years. About 38 years is a long time. I've had to write the activity so that no matter what combination of activities a particular student chooses to do, or in what order, he or she will still achieve the objectives for the unit. The kids know how many days we'll spend on the unit. They know how many points each activity is worth. They know how many points they need to achieve on the unit by the end of the unit to get a D or a C or a B or an A. So there's a lot of choice. Now, there are a couple activities in each unit, though, that are required. Uh, the computer tutorial, I have a fleet of 10 computers around the perimeter of the room, and over the years I've developed these interactive computer tutorials that basically take the place of the things that I used to lecture on. Now, I haven't totally eliminated lectures, but most of the lectures now the kids work through at their own pace in groups of one or two. Well, one's not a group, but you know what I mean. Sometimes they work in pairs. Self-paced, they work through these self-paced interactive computer tutorials. And then the other thing that is required is the test at the end of the unit. So if you walked into my class, you would see kids doing this. You would likely see kids working on internet website activities. Uh, very likely you might see a couple kids off in a corner of the room watching a video with headphones on related to some concept in the unit. Um, you would probably see some students involved in guided inquiry activities. You would very likely see some kids tending to their ongoing science fair projects. I'm sure you would see a few kids gathered around a game board designed to teach them some biological concept within the unit. You probably, I know you'd see lots of kids involved in hands-on, minds-on simulations. And you would probably also see some students working on what are called reflection sheets. And this is where they're required to think about their learning and fill out reflection sheets, make connections, connect past knowledge to new knowledge, and self-evaluate their efforts. There's one activity on every menu in every unit that a lot of kids are drawn to. It's called arts and entertainment. And this is where they take 
some concept they've learned in the unit and outside of class develop a project and present it on the last day of the unit, like a five minute presentation. And it can be a skit, it can be a video that they produced or a short PowerPoint presentation or a song or a poem or a comic strip sequence or a poster. And I encourage them to try to be non-traditional. These two young ladies took it upon themselves to build a a model of a chlorophyll molecule using gumdrops to represent the atoms. Um, here's another example that I liked. These two young ladies, their sisters, decided to demonstrate in a very creative way the fact that they each received half of their genes from mom and half their genes from dad. And I don't know if mom and dad knew about it, but it was a, it was a great time. It was a great time. So, in summary, this is, what, this is what I do. Try to get kids involved in choice, collaboration, communication, critical thinking, and creativity. They seem to like it. They seem to like it. They've told me in private, Mr. Rule, we like the computer tutorials better than your, than your lectures. And that's okay, because it's not about me anyway, right? It's not about us. And um, they like it. And I think it inspires. I don't have hard data. I have a gut feeling. And so it's student-centered, and like I said, it frees me up to mentor on the side and to nurture. And that's a lot of fun. And I think that's probably what keeps me going. Thank you. Mama will be so proud. <laughs>